As you can see, I'm standing here in the centre of London where John Hayes MP, Shadow Minister for Innovation, Universities and Skills, has taken time out of his busy schedule to talk to the British Institute for Learning and Development about his views on education and training, in particular in a recession, and what a Conservative government would do differently to a Labour one. John, thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to the Build today. I'd like to focus my first questions around skills development in the recession. What skills gaps and shortages do you think are preventing business growth in the UK at the present time? There's a whole range of skills gaps that are damaging the interest of British business. There's the issue of core skills, uh, the, the ability to rewrite and count. Too many people leave formal education without those core skills. Uh, then employers tell us there's all sorts of life skills gaps and that they're uh, injurious to the interests of individuals and companies. As well as which, we've got a significant problem with intermediate and higher level skills, level three and four. We know that our competitors, France, Germany, other countries, are doing much better than us at level three and four skills. So we have to get those things right if we're going to earn our way fight our way, compete our way out of this recession. Thank you very much for that. How do you think that skills development will lead to more economic growth? I believe, and there's a lot of academic evidence to support this, I think Lord Leach took this on board in his report, didn't he? That there's a close relationship between the level of skills and how competitive a country can be. An advanced economy needs advanced skills. We're never going to go back to making tin plate metal toys. We can't compete with China and India in that kind of simple, unsophisticated manufacturing. And so we need to compete in a high-tech, high-skilled world by being a high-tech, high-skilled nation. In a recession, employers typically cut back on training costs. What are your views on this? And what do you think the government should be doing to help employers who wish to develop their workforce? We know, don't we, from previous recessions that, as you suggest, employers do indeed cut back on skills. The things that tend to get cut by companies in a recession are marketing, training uh, and actually research and development. Those have the effect, those cuts have the effect, of lengthening and deepening the economic downturn. Because when green shoots appear, companies that have reduced their investment in those things are not ready to take advantage of the turnaround. So we as a Conservative opposition are pressing the government to focus on what support we can give to employers to help them invest in those key areas. What can we do? Several things. Supply side reform, making the whole business of investing in skills less bureaucratic, less irksome employers. Boosting apprenticeships by paying an apprenticeship bonus to every small and medium sized company that takes on an apprentice. Uh, dealing with some of the uh, the doubts people have about the outcome from that investment by making sure the money goes direct to employers and front-loading it when that decision is toughest to take, when they're getting less payback in economic terms from the people they're training. So there's lots of things that we're proposing that government could do that I hope we would do in government. How would your policies reflect the needs of those who've left compulsory education and who wish to redevelop or reskill themselves. One of the things that our policies address is the collapse in adult and community learning. Many people find their way back into skilling, into training, through informal, non-accredited learning. We know that the cuts in adult community learning, uh, uh, extraordinarily, 1.4 million places have been lost just in a few years, according to NIACE, that those cuts have damaged the chances of those wanting to come back into education to reskill, to change direction, or to upskill. By reinvesting in adult community learning, as we intend to do, our policy is to put £100 million a year extra into adult community learning. We think we will provide a route back into skilling, which will help thousands, tens of thousands of people currently disenfranchised. If we can move on now and talk about the FE and the HE agenda. Organisations say they want skills, not qualifications. 
yet universities and colleges typically offer qualifications and not skills. What can be done to redress this balance and to what extent do you think it should be demand-led? I think that the skills needs of a nation are dynamic. I talked about how the uh, changing nature of the economic circumstances we face mean that we need more advanced skills. But one of the other features of a rapidly changing economic profile is that the skills needs are also rapidly changing and we need a system that's sufficiently responsive to deal with that change. Now the problem with a system that's based around very rigid qualifications is it lacks that responsiveness. When we talk about demand-led, we need courses that are shaped by a collaboration between employers and trainers, between those who do and those who teach. Uh, there's, there's no shame in that. Um, many courses already work on that basis. The best of the FE sector work very closely with employers as now. Let's take that best practice, build on it and make it the norm. I think we can have a more demand-led system and I think that system can be more dynamic but it requires rethinking how courses are delivered, how they're devised and how they change over time.